There is a creepy, mysterious tower located in Kaelid. This tower is huge. It is one of the biggest towers in the entire world of Elden Ring. The tower holds a very powerful sword, all the way in the basement, guarded by a powerful boss that has higher HP than bosses even found in the final regions of the game. One might therefore conclude that this sword is impossible to obtain early on, for sure, there is no way to get it, and maybe that's just for the better, because what would even happen if such a sword would in fact be obtained right at the start of the game? Did you ever hear the tale about the Godslayer Shaolin Monk? The rumors go that this mysterious individual did somehow get this sword early on in his life, when the Godslayer was merely a Shaolin Monk, mostly experienced in the arts of Kung Fu, but with no real status at all in the world. The rumors go that this monk wanted to become the strongest monk to ever live and somehow outsmarted this strong individual guarding the sword through tactical and strategical brilliance to obtain the sword and obviously in a legitimate way. And the absolute rampage that the monk went on to onwards netted him the Godslayer title. Impressed with the monk's skills and sheer power, shady characters tied to this and that and even the sword itself made sure to recruit the monk for their mission. And in return the monk would be granted knowledge of extremely powerful forbidden magic that other monks would never even dare to speak about. As a result of his courageous adventures, the monk might very well be one of the strongest fighters to have ever existed in the world of Elden Ring. There is no real arguing when you melt everything you face within milliseconds from this plane of existence and you're completely unbound of restrictions yourself. And you know what removes annoying restrictions as well? NordVPN. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. NordVPN unblocks your favorite games, geo-restricted servers or platforms that are not available in your country. There are over 5,500 servers in 59 countries so you definitely never have to worry about finding the right server for you. Letting your location limit what you can use or visit is a thing of the past. It's also very easy to use. Connect with one click to any location you desire. NordVPN comes in various options to purchase and there's a very nice deal right now if you buy a two-year plan because you will get four months of NordVPN extra for free. It's also completely risk-free. If it's not for you, then there's also a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can buy NordVPN by going to the link shown on screen, check it out and you will support the channel that way as well. Now back to the video. The build that I'm going to show you is so powerful, it holds up from the very first second that you make a new playthrough all the way till the very end of your playthrough. I will show you the full progression path in this video for the best results. This build is a dex fate build with some requirements in the strength attribute, meaning the best starting class will in fact be the prophet. So pick that class, get the golden seed for an extra flask, make your monk and let's get going. Before the monk went onwards to get his iconic legendary sword, naturally he did have to prepare for the fight. See, the Godkin Apostle in the Divine Tower is a very beefy boss in terms of HP, but he's also slow and pretty f***ing dumb. So I did in fact come up with a way to make sure we can destroy this boss at the very start of the game and get that juicy sword. And I tried out a bunch of different things to make sure not only I can succeed, but also my audience and community succeed. It was not an easy endeavor at all and see, we need to thrive together. If I do it and only I, then in reality it is all meaningless, really. With a vastly different audience ranging from god players to absolute beginners watching my videos, the question arises. Can we kill this guy in a way that is foolproof? can in fact be reproduced successfully and can be simplified in such a way that everybody understands what needs to happen. And I finally did come up with a way and in a very convenient way that only requires us to pick up stuff that is all in or near the starting area. And that is good news, right? Yes, it's very good news because otherwise I was almost so close to throwing away this video. <laughs> Anyways, so let's prepare and get everything we need. First of all, we need to get a head start and for those that know, you know, this part is not specific to this video, but it's important nonetheless. So get your horse from Melina at the gate from Side of Grace. Get a bleed weapon, the Morningstar weapon preferably is a good choice right here. Pick up a golden pickled foul foot right here in Limgrave as well. Go to the third church of America, it's close by. Pick up the flask of wonders physic right there, it's useful for your entire playthrough and use the teleport behind the church. This will teleport you to exactly here on the map and you want to go south till you reach Fort Ferret. That's this spot on the map. Ignore all the enemies on the route to the fort, no matter how big they are. 
And when you arrive at Fort Ferret, you want to pick up a very nice talisman. You want to ignore all the bats while you're running inside and move towards the ladder. Just run, climb up and then pick up the Dactus Medallion. This is very important so don't forget to do that. Then keep moving till you get to the second gap and jump down. Move to the right of yours, pick up the golden rune that's laying around there and then jump to the sneaky pathway to your right. Keep moving till you can jump down again and there will be the Radican Source Heal. If you're not familiar with this talisman, it's a very good talisman that will help us out because it provides a lot of relevant stats right at the start of the game. Then go outside. Kill Grail, the big ass dragon, with your Morningstar weapon equipped so you proc bleed and kill him quickly. When the dragon is almost dead, make sure to pop the golden pickled fowl food that we just picked up so we get a bunch of extra runes. Now you'll have a bunch of runes and it's just really a nice way to get a good start as it's pretty much free. Now that we have done the standard get OP early stuff, we can start with the actual build. Make sure to also use the golden rune that you picked up inside the fort as well. Then go level up with all the runes you acquired, use them exactly like this. This will make sure you have everything you need, both in terms of sustain, damage output and requirements. With all of this, we have a nice talisman and a really good head start in terms of our levels. But this on itself will obviously not be enough because, for example, we don't have any useful weapons to beat the Godskin Apostle. So here's what we need additionally to make the fight as easy and as foolproof as possible. If you paid attention, we spent 3 points in Arcane. And no, that was not me being on substances again. No, those 3 points are going to be extremely useful. Killing Grail also gives us 5 Dragon Hearts, so for this go to the Dragon Communion Cathedral in Kaelid. What is important is that you actually get here and buy the Rotten Breath Incantation from the altar and you can spend your other 4 Dragon Hearts as you wish, but I would recommend buying Ice Breath Incantation so you have both Frostbite and Scarlet Rot in your kit going forwards, which is very, very useful. Then after that you want to go to Limgrave again, go to the river near the Murkwater Co. side of Grace, there just will then spawn and according you will kill him with your breaths and Yura will help you out as well with that. After that you will get the Reduvia dagger. This is an incredibly useful dagger and you will see why in a second. But we also need to get the recipe for sleep pots. The recipe is near the third church of America so go there pick the recipe up which will be laying around on a body. Near the recipe is an infinite mushroom farm which is nice because we need mushrooms to make sleep pots. It is near the Murkwater Coast side of Grace. Go to the Grace, move to the north and you will see a bunch of of mushrooms laying around in the water. Pick as much as you need or want and just reset the area to make them respawn. Close by, after using the rocket launcher or whatever it is, you will find three Trinas lilies. Now you only need one sleep pot really for the method that I'm going to show you, but the more the better obviously in case you fail. So I would recommend you to bring three sleep pots to the fight. If you need more three nest lilies, here are a bunch of other locations where you can also pick these up. There's actually quite a lot of these plants in Limgrave and other close by areas, so that is definitely convenient. After doing that, go to the Merchant Kale at the Church of Ella, buy the three crack tiers that he sells. We can use these crack pots to instantly keep making sleep pots with them. And for the final piece, we want to go to the Weeping Peninsula, pick up the Poison Mist incantation that will be there laying around for you to pick up. and the final Final step is to pick up the opaline bubble tier in the weaving peninsula as well by defeating the tree near the minor earth tree right here. With all of this you are now fully prepared but you don't have to actually do every single step that I just mentioned. Only the Reduvia and the incantations are the mandatory parts, the rest are essentially just extra safety measures. So the Divine Tower that I mentioned before is in Kaelid, it is actually very close to Grail which we just killed so you can go to that grace near him and go right away to the tower. In the tower you want to descend towards the basement, just ignore the enemies while you do so, you'll probably die a few times trying to remember how to move but don't worry it's pretty linear once you're inside and you'll eventually get to this side of grace. The time has finally arrived guys, it is time to face the boss. The tension is unbearable, are you sweating, are you shaking? Don't, no need for that, just make sure to follow the following strategy to have the least variance in your outcomes. Now, somewhere at the start of the fight, the Godskin Apostle will throw a black flame fireball at you. The moment you see him raising that arm of his is the moment you throw your sleep bolt. You will get hit by his fireball but you'll survive and you'll have a guaranteed sleep pot hitting him resulting into the apostle falling asleep. Now the apostle can actually dodge your sleep bolt so this way you guarantee you let him fall asleep right away. Then heal up, use your flask for the opaline bubble tier, go behind the apostle and then go all out and use rotten breath. Don't stand too close to him when you do this but a few meters away at least to make sure the scarlet rod starts ticking. 
the apostle will start waking up thanks to this scarlet rot consuming his flesh but in this very moment you want to use your poison mist incantation stay a few meters away from him again and use the mist somewhere central in the arena he will start walking towards you and through the poison mist in fact and like i said the ai of this guy is not that great like i showed you even to the point that he will start sometimes casting inside of the mist but if he doesn't, you can completely manipulate how he moves and make him stay in the poison mist because he will just follow you around. So make circles around the poison mist if you want him to stay in the mist. After a few seconds of him being in the poison mist, it will start ticking on him as well. You'll notice this because the ticks are a lot faster now. You'll get two subsequent ticks of damage real fast and then a second or so of nothing and then two subsequent ticks again quickly. This means that the boss now has both Scarlet Rolt and Poison on him even though you can only see the scarlet rot particles but if you see it like this ticking then it means you did a great job and you have successfully applied both scarlet rot and poison now after you've successfully done that it is time to use your redufia the Ash of War of the Redufia procs blood loss, but it's also a ranged Ash of War, meaning you can take massive chunks of HP from this guy with just this seemingly little dagger from a distance nonetheless, and that's everything we need. We don't want to be in melee territory at all with this guy so early on in your playthrough. With the Redufia, that problem is thankfully completely solved for us. But don't get overconfident and don't spam the Ash of War. That is the dumbest thing you can do in this case because it will lock you in animation. Just use one or two casts at a time and you can smooth sail all of this and just safely destroy this guy. Like I said, he's really slow and the best time to use your Redufia from what I've personally experienced is right after the God Skin engages in some kind of action such as throwing a black flame fireball or anything offensive really. You'll have this small period every time of where the God Skin won't do anything and you can safely cast your Redufia. Now with this strategy you want to proc blood loss 4 times with the Redufia and it's really not that hard. Just make sure to maintain a distance of a few meters. You also have the Opaline Bubble Tear on you as a safety net for if you screw up. And at the same time you also have your Scarlet Rot and Poison beautifully rotting away this guy's HP. There's only really one attack from this Apostle that is particularly annoying and that's when he does this. So make sure to pay extra attention to that and in that case dodge it or run away as far as possible to not get hit by it. Now the 4th blood loss proc will be the hardest of the blood loss procs with your Redufia because the threshold for blood loss is now higher thanks to the first 3 blood loss procs. But just keep using your Redufia. If you have more sleep pots then I would recommend you to save them all the way till the end. For when you have procced blood loss 3 times already, use the sleep pots and then just go ahead with spamming the Redufia till he wakes up again essentially to get a bunch of blood loss build up in one go to decrease the tension of the fight. And then you will ultimately just succeed and kill the Godskin Apostle. Also, if you notice, I didn't even use Spirit Ashes. Why? Uh, I don't. I don't know really. I, hey, that's actually a great idea to use as well to make things even easier. I've been trying to keep all my builds Spirit Ash free to really show that the build itself is actually OP. But if you want to add an extra safety layer to this method, make sure to use those Spirit Ashes as a decoy or distraction for the Godskin while you chip away his health with your Redufia, making things even easier for you. With all of that, you can now go ahead and throw a big party for you and everyone you know. And then after that, finally walk towards the chest and claim your trophy. The fight might have been a pain in the ass, but the payoff is huge as you see. The Godslayer Greatsword is an absolute monster in combat and getting it at the start of the game well let's say it will make up for a very unique experience defined by absolute destruction to everything that even dares to come anywhere near you right away you can go ahead and upgrade your new sword because the godskin apostle gave you a little nice extra bonus of just a small 94,000 runes right at the start of the game it's incredible and you can use another golden pickled foul food to increase this even more if you want to upgrade it bypass stormwell like this to get into Lyrnia, go to Ichi the Smith in the northwestern part. He will sell you Somber Smithing Stones 1 to 4. Buy all of them, and right away at the Smith himself, you can upgrade your sword to plus 4. Now go to the Dragonburn Trins in Limgrave and take the teleporter chest there to get into Kaelid, the Celia Crystal Tunnel to be specific. Go outside the tunnel and stick to the right basically till you see an entrance to your right. Move towards the end of the pad to pick up a Somber Smithing Stone number 5, and then you'll want to teleport back to the Celia Crystal Tunnel and move your way through it until you get to the boss of that tunnel 
The boss is at the end of the tunnel. Just ignore everything in the tunnel and just keep progressing forward. Run, 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 run until you get to the boss. Make sure to upgrade your sword to plus 5 before facing this boss to make it as easy as possible. And then kill the boss right there with the sword for a somber smithing stone number 6. Now you'll have your gold slayer sword upgraded all the way to plus 6 right at the start of the game granting you the ultimate start. In regards to the remainder of the runes that you just got from killing the Apostle, I would suggest to spend all of them in Endurance. This will give us an amazing option to get really great gear right at the start of the game. I will talk about all of that and gear in a second after we get our second talisman. You can however pick up the Flask of Wondrous Physic that you'll want to run for your entire playthrough right at the start of the game. Our sword scales mostly with Dexterity, so you'll want to get the Dexterity node right away right here. And since we are a hybrid build, we definitely want to keep this Crystal Tear in our Flask for the entire playthrough. Then for our second Crystal Tear, we absolutely want to flip same shrouding crack tier that you can get from the minor earth tree in the northwestern part of Caelan. This is a massive pickup, so the earlier you get it, the better. The earth tree is weak against fire damage, so our sword will deal incredible damage, and with that, you'll completely destroy this little tree. Our ash of war consists out of fire damage, as well as just the normal damage of our sword, making a boost to our fire damage output an amazing option. That's why you want to run this crystal tier for your entire playthrough as well. Now let's have a try with our Gold Slayer Greatsword, shall we? Using the Ash of War will already tell you everything you need to know. It absolutely destroys your enemies and having it so early on in your playthrough is an absolute blast. With one cast of the Ash of War you just decimate your enemies. And don't forget the actual sword itself is also great. So hitting things physically with this is amazing as well. The sword itself has great damage and great poise damage, meaning you will stance break your enemies all the time, leading into you getting those juicy critical hits. Now you see how fast we kill Margit, and after killing Margit you will get a second talisman slot, which is nice because you can now get the Arsenal Charm talisman as our second talisman. This talisman will be given by Nefeli Lux, make sure to talk to her in Stormville right before you enter the fight with Goldrick or you'll lock yourself out of this talisman. So make sure to talk to her, but you can also get the plus two version of this talisman right at the start of the game as well. If you're interested in that, then I'll put the link in the description for that as well. Either option will suffice for the early game. With this talisman in our possession, it is time to get our gear that we want to use for our entire play. And sometimes the best things in life are found right at the place where everything started. So get back to, yes, you know where, the Divine Tower and start farming the Black Flame Monk set right there. Kill this guy over and over and over, thankfully the side of race is right next to him so you can do this quite fast, but keep killing him till he drops all the pieces of the entire set for you. Now you want to equip the entire set except for the Greaves, instead of the Greaves make sure to get the clean rolled Greaves in Kaelid right here. You need to defeat the clean rod knights for this, but it is very important that you do so because it fits the set even better than the actual creeps of the set. Visually, you won't see any real difference and it actually matches very well with the gauntlets. But most importantly, the entire black flame set puts you at 50 poise, which is a bit unfortunate because we need 51 poise. But this is solved by the fact that if you wear the set with the clean world creeps instead of the black flame creeps, this will in fact put you at 52 poise. How convenient. So you actually meet the threshold for resisting incoming hits while also just looking pretty much exactly the same and that's a very important thing with this build that 52 poise because the ghost sayers great sword ash of war takes time to cast and with meeting the poise threshold we can resist additional hits that otherwise could have interrupted our cast and thus our hardest hitting damage ability so it's really nice to get an armor set that meets the 50 poise threshold very early on in your playthrough because you will have benefit from it all game long and also you get a bunch of extra defenses with it meaning you will now be a lot more tanky as well and therefore it really is a win-win situation. The Black Flame Monk set is the set for this build. It fits thematically perfectly and really it is all in the name. And as you see with being smart and swapping out the Greaves with an other similar looking type of Greaves with more poise we also meet that 50 poise threshold. In Stormvale there's also the Gold Slayer seal, which is going to be the other side of our build. Considering we are heavily invested in Fate with this Dex Fate build, naturally it would be a waste not to run sick incantations with this build. The most thematically fitting incantations will in fact be the Godskin incantations, and nobody can deny this, but the Black Flame incantations are some of the coolest incantations in the entire game. 
pick up the Gold Slayer Shield in Stormbell after killing Margaret. The Gold Slayer Shield is amazing because it will in fact boost the damage output of our Gold Skin Incantation. So it is the absolute best option. And next to the seal will be the Gold Skin Prayer Book that you can turn in to get the Black Flame Incantation. This is an absolute gold tier incantation that will be your long range tool for the entire game. The incantation is amazing early on and it stays amazing all the way till the very end of your playthrough. With this incantation you also cover the only thing the sword actually lacks an option to deal with things in the distance so that is great making this pickup an absolute gold tier pickup and you can thankfully get it also very early on in your playthrough as you see you can also get the flame grant me strength buff incantation right at the start of the game it is close by in Kaled, and i do recommend you to get it to get that juicy bonus to your damage output and finally for early to mid game i also recommend you to get the golden vow incantation as early as possible it will give you a nice bonus in both offensive and defensive aspects Now early to mid game you will just melt everything you face in your path with this build. Going through the effort to obtain a sword right at the start of the game and then accordingly use it is so much fun and is such a great reward. You will literally destroy everything in mere seconds and one shot a lot of other things while not even having to worry about anything really. Also the sword is very stylish, visually it's a very pleasing way to destroy your enemies and with the incantations you just picked up and the seal the early game is going to be absolute destruction for you. However, we're not done yet, there is actually more to this sword than just the Asher 4 and there's also more to the Black Flame School of Incantations as well that you need to know about. So for the later parts of your playthrough, you want to run exactly the same armor and flask that I went over in the first part of this video. For talismans, we now have more slots and also more options, but you definitely want to keep running the Great Char Arsenal Charm. It makes things a lot easier in terms of wearing heavy armor while staying in the medium load category. And also you want to get the Fire Scorpion Charm. You can get this talisman pretty early on as well. This talisman will boost literally everything in our kit from our sword to our incantation. So it's an amazing pickup. Then for the final talisman, I do recommend you to get the Shard of Alexander to make our Ash of War hit even harder and the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman to make us very tanky. Now that you've unlocked more parts of the game, I would definitely pick up just all of the Black Flame incantations. They all have something unique. In particular, Scouring Black Flame has a nice reach to it and is good for AoE damage if you just want to get something out quickly and kill things in front of you. Black Flame Ritual is a really nice defensive tool for many different scenarios and you can use it to combo very well into your Gold Slayer Greatsword because the enemies caught in the flame will just keep getting staggered giving you all the time to hit them when they are in the flames. It's a really amazing tool. And then Black Flame Protection if you want to be even more tanky it is a nice alternative buff instead of flame granting strength. And in combination with the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman it will make you insanely tanky for those fights where you just need that extra sustain. In terms of stats you'll want to work towards this stat distribution for a level 125 build which will already be more than enough to beat the game we are a dex fate build and this will make your damage output insane as you already saw earlier in the video and we'll also see in a second with our flask we will also reach that first soft cap of dexterity which is really nice for a hybrid build on such a low meta level as you see i still have three points in arcane from the earlier part so if you want to min max it even more you can respec and put those three points in vigor but really you already have everything you need and with those three points in arcane you can still use those dragon incantations which is a nice addition as well if you want to go for a level 150 build then i would just put the extra points in vigor and fully soft cap on it and put the final remaining points in endurance and with that you'll have absolutely crazy sustain Now, like you saw earlier in the video, with the Ash of War of the God Slayer's Great Sword, you can absolutely already just melt everything in your path and just completely destroy everything. This was true early on, but it's also definitely true in many scenarios for the later parts of the game. However, 
However, the Gold Slayer's Great Sword is also great in other aspects. It's, for instance, the only unique, primarily deck scaling Colossal Sword in the game, making it much lighter than the other Colossal Swords. And you can use this little bit of information to your advantage and really use this aspect of the Great Sword because you can use its normal, charged, poke, roll, and jump attacks to bully your opponents and stance break them quite easily thanks to the faster attack speed of the sword. And when you do so, you'll also set up nicely for a critical hit, which you then can combo into a beautifully swung the queen's black flame the sword's asher for to obliterate your enemies this is a really nice combo because you're not always going to get the opportunity to just use your asher for freely like shown earlier in the video in the late game sometimes you really do have to set up for it first and with the other types of ways that you can attack with the gold sayer's great sword you do have a way to set up nicely for your asher for all in all, the build makes you a true god slayer and nothing will stop you really, so enjoy trying it out from start to finish and obliterating everything in the game. And if there's one sword that is truly an all game sword, then it's definitely the god slayer's great sword. Have fun trying out the build, make sure to give the video a like, subscribe if you're still not subscribed and hit the bell thing and finally let me know your thoughts in the comments.